Hey everybody, just going to have time for a quick one today. I wanted to get a look at my foot tank here, the little tank that I keep sitting directly below my waterfall. It's actually sort of meant to give the illusion of being kind of the final part of the waterfall, even though it is a completely separate system. But I wound up pouring a little bit of water in there today. I was just kind of topping the tank off. I'm in a hurry. I don't have a lot of time. I had topped off my waterfall, and while I was there, I threw the hose into this tank. When I did, it stirred up all the mom and the crud and the grossness. This is one of those tanks that I just never do anything on. My regular viewers will know how infrequently I ever talk about doing a water change on this tank. And so the water got so gross when I stirred it all up that I decided to do a water change. And I have this handy dandy power water changer. It's a fluid transfer pump. I just put some fresh batteries in it. So it did a good job of getting five gallons of water pulled out of there. But you can see how gross that water is. The mulm and the crud and stuff builds up in this tank until it's several inches deep. And that's what got all stirred around when I did the top off and just added some water. So I pulled a couple gallons out into the one bucket. I got a fresh bucket. I did five more gallons. So we're probably at about seven gallons uh, pulled out at this point. And we're going to pull a little bit more out uh, and then top it off. But I don't want to shock the fish too much by making too much uh, radical change to the water chemistry. Uh, so what we're going to do is stop here. We're going to check some of the water chemistry and then we're going to go ahead and get the tank topped off and we're going to look at the chemistry and you know see what kind of changes we made and so on and so forth um, on the before and after. It's not going to look a whole lot better than it does now to be honest with you because there's no way I'm going to get anywhere near that crud out of there. Um, so don't look forward to it looking a lot better but I'm just kind of curious as to what the chemistry is going to do under such a large water change. Um, I know the TDS in this tank is well over 2,000 parts per million so it should be interesting to see what happens. Uh, I also want to point out that this tank has a deep sand bed on one side and then it has a uh, Lexan partition here with a bunch of little holes drilled in it so water can weep through uh, from this side to this side or back. So I think I've got a little bit of denitrification going on in this tank and that's what I really want to find out about is with water that gross and filthy and uh, it's been so long since I've done a water change in this tank I'm really curious to see what the nitrate comes out looking like so that's what we're going to test uh we'll probably test the tds ph that sort of thing uh and then we'll go ahead and do the you know after part of the video so give me a second we'll call that your before all right and for what it's worth there's your after like i said it's not going to be a lot prettier looking because it's going to take hours and hours for that tank to settle back down and the water to get clear again and i just don't have that kind of time to wait uh to shoot the second half of this video today so we're going to look at it now and I'm really, really surprised by the water chemistry. I guess I shouldn't be. I mean, I did just talk about how it's got a deep sand bed in there, but I guess I underestimated how effective that deep sand bed has been. So first of all, we started out with the water level just above where this second tier is. And what I did was I filled the tank up to about where you see it now. And then that's when I had stirred up all of the grossness and everything. And I just started to start doing a water change. And so I pulled some water out. That was what our before sample came from. It was already several gallons of water added back into what was in the tank. So when I tested the nitrate, I was expecting to get a lot of nitrate, even with that deep sand bed. And I know you can't really tell this isn't a good way of doing this, but that is under 20 parts per million. It's probably closer to 10 parts per million. And that's from our before sample. When I did the after sample, I actually did two of them because the first one I tested, I thought I did wrong. I thought I put the first drops in twice and I didn't get a result. And so I did it again, and I got the same exact thing happen. Almost no nitrate in the after. So I achieved that by doing a huge water change. As the water was flowing in, I was using that pump to pump it out. I probably did seven gallons. I did another five-gallon bucket after the first part of the video, and we wound up pulling two full five-gallon buckets out of there, plus about a half a five-gallon bucket um, 
to begin with. So we probably did at least seven to eight gallons of water out of there, and then I wound up topping it back off. You can see my cherry barb swimming around right there. That's a male cherry barb. I had to put it in this tank because it was being uh, too aggressive and problematic with my female uh, that I have in my other tank. Uh, so anyway, I checked the um, total dissolved solids. That was uh, 445 parts per million to begin with, and it is now 344. So all of that, I only dropped the total dissolved solids down by about 100 points. The pH started around 7.3, which was low. I thought it was going to be much higher than that. But the pH started around 7.3 and it's now sitting around 6.8 so even with all that water change I really did not shift the water chemistry in this tank very much at all I probably shifted the temperature more than anything and I think I actually warmed the tank up a few degrees uh, on that last little bit of water that I was putting in here so it's interesting to see the way that cherry barb is swimming around like that it's usually not that active so I don't know if it's one of those post water change excitements or I really did indeed shift some aspect of the water chemistry more than I realize but as far as everything I checked uh, what, what amounts to be a massive water change in this tank really had very little and limited impact on the water chemistry so that deep sand bed really in this case I think is what was stabilizing that tank for me not the pH necessarily but keeping those nitrates low uh, over all that time, it's just, again, the way this tank sits here with all that crud and stuff in there and as heavy-handed as I am with feeding it, for the nitrates to be that low and the pH to be that stable, it's just, I'm really happy with the way this tank has turned out and it kind of did that by accident. So we'll follow along with it. We'll see what happens next water change, but it'll probably be summertime or the end of summer or whenever before I get around to doing a water change in this tank again. Uh, it's one of those kind of spur-of-the-moment uh, whims whenever I just say hey let me go do that and get that out of the way and then I forget about it again for months and months and months on end so it'll be interesting to see the fate of that uh, cherry barb I can still see it swimming around in the front glass like that it's being really active compared to the way it normally is so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but again we'll find out over time so make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss that or anything else I've got coming up you never know what it's going to be uh, I don't have a playlist for that little foot tank there but I kind of associate that with my waterfall tank, so I'm going to put this on that playlist. So thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Don't forget this one here is my waterfall tank, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.